everybody. For excitement and enjoyment, see football at its best. Professional football. Yes, see our own, the Eagles. As we all know, the Eagles came mighty close in 1952. And we drafted Al Conway of Army. Of all, here to my hand, over here to my right, backfield coach Frank Reagan. Howdy, everybody. And now that very handsome head coach. Gee, we think both of those young men will fit the bill. Then we went to our offensive strength by uh, acquiring a couple of good offensive guards. Prominent among these are Jess Richardson of the University of Alabama. And out of a list of what we think are very fine names, uh, you'll certainly remember Pennsylvania's own All-American and Eddie Bell. With the fine team, and we think we had a very fine team in 52, and the rookies that are coming up in 53, we definitely plan to be in contention all the way. Well, thank you very much, Jim. That sounds mighty good to us. And let me remind the fans that you can get those tickets for 1953 right now at the Eagles ticket office, 15th and Locust Streets. And now let's take a look at the highlights of last fall. Now the pro highlights camera focuses on the city of brotherly love where at Shy Park, the Washington Redskins made like country cousins for the improving Philadelphia Eagles. Midway through the first period, Washington's Eddie LeBaron punt from his own end zone. Waiting for it on the Philadelphia 45-yard line is the Eagle safety man, Don Stevens. Stevens gathers it in, darts between several Redskins, and breaks for the sidelines. And the rapid rookie from Illinois is as the Eagles fly away to an early 7-0 edge. Later in the first quarter, the Redskins run into double trouble as the Barons pitch out is deflected, then recovered by the Eagles' Pete Pihos, is brought back to the point of recovery. Those Eagles proved to be mighty stubborn, however, and this time their touchdown sticks as Bobby Thomason directs a perfect pitch to Bud Grant in the end zone, and Philadelphia leads 14 to nothing. Second period action finds the Philadelphians in possession but forced to punt. Adrian Burke gets away a long high spiral. Rookie Redskin back Johnny Williams puts his talents on display as he races down the sideline. Key block on the 25 is all that he needs to complete a beautiful 74-yard return to make the score read Eagles 14, Redskins 7. And right after the kickoff, the birds spread their wings in quest of another score as John Husfar bolts for an 11-yard pickup. Abby Thomason takes over at the helm of the Philadelphia machine and flips to Pete Pihos, who drives 20 yards to the Redskins 28. Thomason and Pihos pool their talents again on a pass play that clicks as Pihos goes out of bounds on the Washington two-yard line. And from there, it's just a matter of formality for John Husfire, who blasts across, putting the birds on the long end of a 21-7 count. Near the end of the half, a bit of razzle-dazzle, redskin style, boomerangs as Billy Cox drops the ball but can't pick it up. For the Eagles, Chuck Bettinerick slams into him, Jolton Mike Jarmalock. Gives the ball an accidental boot, then follows it up, gets a Sunday hop from the bounding ball, and bowls into the end zone for a touchdown as the Eagles ring up 28 points on the scoreboard to seven for the Redskins at halftime. The Philadelphians score another at the outset of the second half to lead 35 to seven when the Skins come to life as LeBaron throws to Gene Brito, who's dropped on the Eagles 28. On a wide sweeping play, Julie Rykovich becomes the Redskins' pigskin porter as he tears to the birds, too. Chuck Brzanovich on a short plunge makes the grade in Washington's attempt to close a 35-13 gap held by Philadelphia. The Eagles, however, are by no means finished as they take off again on a Thomason to Stevens toss that goes as far as the Washington 22 as the third period close. Up Goldston circles his right wing for seven yards, but that leaves the Philadelphians shy of a first down, so up steps Bobby Walston for a three-point insurance field goal attempt. Walston kicks, it's good. The Eagles lead 38 to 13. The Redskins go polish off their afternoon efforts with a brilliant bit of football finesse. Harry Gilmer hides the ball, then reveals it, but by then it's in route. 
soaring through the air 41 yards on a direct connection to Hugh Taylor for a Redskin score, but the Eagles prevail 38 to 20 over Washington. Next stop is Shy Park, Philadelphia, where the feathers fly in a bird battle between the Cardinals and the Eagles. It's nothing to nothing in the second quarter. Cardinals ball on their own 21, but Charlie Trippy and Billy Cross get crossed up on the signals. Both let go of the ball, and alert, Eagle and Pete Pijo swoops in and flops on it, gets up and scampers for a score. Bobby Walston boots the point as the Eagles fly away to a 7-0 lead over the Cardinals. The Windy City Redbirds crank up their offensive machine, which starts to roll with a trippy to Stone Cipher aerial that nets eight yards. The tricky Charlie Trippy treads on the accelerator and fools the Philadelphians while he goes rambling along 26 yards to the Eagles 18. Trippy continues feeding fire into the Cardinal offense which gets red hot here as Cliff Anderson snares Trippy's toss, goes over for the touchdown. Joe Gary converts, and the Cardinals tied the game at 7-7. Near the end of the first half, the Cardinals take over again, but not for long as Don Pansiera, while attempting to pass, is snowed under by the Eagles. Again, it's Pete Pijos plopping on the pigskin, and the ball goes over to Philadelphia. There's less than a minute to go before the end of the first half and the Eagles make the most of every second as Don Stevens grabs Thomason's short pass and scurries down the sidelines before being pushed out of bounds on the Cardinals' 12. But there are only six seconds left and not enough time for another running play, so the Eagles send Bobby Walston in for a field goal attempt. Walston's foot slams into the pigskin. The kick is good as the Eagles break the tie, go out in front 10 to seven at halftime. In the third period, the Cardinals fight to overtake the Eagles as Charlie Trippy rifles a bullseye to Don Paul for a gain of 11 yards. Trippy and Paul team up again on another pass that puts the ball on the Philadelphia 36. A quick opening play with Emil Sitko carrying is good for eight and a first down on the Eagles 18 and the Cardinals are threatening. After three downs, the cards are still on the 18, so Joe Gary comes in for another field goal attempt. The Eagles' buckle Kilroy breaks through to block it. Russ Kraft picks up the ball to kill the Cardinals' last threat, for that's as close as they come for the remainder of the game. So the Eagles go into a second place tie with the Giants in the American Conference race by trumping the cards 10 to 7. Philadelphia's revamped Eagles fly into Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, sporting two straight wins and aiming to make it three against the Browns. The Eagles get away to a fast start as Frank Ziegler bolts down to the Browns' 20, where it's first and 10 for Philadelphia. Ziegler again packs the pigskin on a nine-yard thrust to make it goal to goal for the Eagles. And three yards out, it's Frank Ziegler taking a pitch out, battering into the end zone with the game's first score, and the Eagles lead 7 to nothing. <laughs> Following the kickoff, the Browns' Otto Graham passes on the first play from scrimmage, but the Eagles chuck the clutch. Betnarik intercepts deep in Cleveland territory. The Eagles make their break payoff in points as Bobby Thomason shoots a short pass to Bob Walston, who grabs it and carries himself. The ball and three Browns over the goal, and the underdog Eagles assume a surprising 14 to nothing lead over Cleveland. Quarterback Otto Graham inserts the spark into the sputtering Cleveland machine as he rifles the ball to Dante Lavelli for 24 yards and a first down on the Philadelphia 40. Otto Graham throws the throttle wide open as he whips his right arm around and lets go with a spiraling pass that's gathered in by Max Speedy on the five. And Speedy completes the 28-yard maneuver that puts the Browns on the scoreboard, but on the short end of a 14-7 tap. Second period now, Graham is still at the controls and going strong. Graham twirls a tremendous toss upfield. Max Speedy makes the grab, and the Browns are on the Eagles' 28. 
Otto Graham and Max Beatty put on their pass and catch act once again and it net nine yards for the Cleveland cause. But on fourth down, the Browns are a yard short of a first down. So in comes the man with the magic foot, Lou Groza, whose three-point field goal cuts the Eagles' advantage to 14-10 over Cleveland at halftime. In the second half, Graham unwraps his passing arm right away with a handsome heave to Max Beatty, who takes it with no one near him. And before they know it, the Eagles find themselves behind 17-14. period seems to be all Cleveland as the Browns head goalward again on a pass from Otto Graham to Dub Jones that carries them all the way to the Philadelphia 14. The Birds defense stiffens and stops the Browns on the 13 but from that distance they can't stop Rosa whose second field goal of the day gives Cleveland a 20 to 14 edge. Philadelphia fights back as Thomason pitches out to Fred Inc who winds up and lets go with a mighty pass that hits the mark. Walston snares it, and only a desperation dive stops him from scoring after a beautiful 66-yard play. The effort proves to be a wasted one, as on fourth down, the Browns rise up to stop John Brewer and halt the Philadelphia threat on the three-yard line. Eagles don't lose heart though, and when they get the ball a little later, they take off again on a Thomason toss to Bud Grant that gives them new life on the Cleveland 24. More Eagle aerial antics help to turn the tide. Thomason flips to Bud Grant again, and as the third period ends, the Philadelphians are knocking on the end zone door. They open it early in the final quarter as Ralph Goldston rams across the final stripe to not the count at 2020. Then in the try for the extra point, the Eagles regain the lead at 21 to 20 as Bob Walston's placement is perfect. Later in the period, the Eagles double quarterback offense starts rolling again on a Thomason to Ink to Walston combination that picks up 15 yards. Frank Ziegler on a quick opener slips through the Browns for eight more to the Cleveland four. Rookie halfback Ralph Goldston goes over from the three with the final score of the game as the underdog Eagles upset Cleveland 28 to 20 and by virtue of their victory the Philadelphians throw the American Conference scramble into a three-way tie that finds the Browns, Giants and the Eagles all tied for the top spot. The high-flying Philadelphia Eagles soared into Comiskey Park in Chicago to meet the Chicago Cardinals in another all-important gridiron clash. Going into the contest, the Eagles were sitting on top of the heap in a three-way tie for first, and the Cardinals were looking to snap a five-game losing streak. The fireworks didn't start until early in the second quarter. Then, with the Eagles in possession on their own 23, Bobby Thomason completes a long, low pass to Harry Grant. Ray Ramsey of the Cards makes the tackle and causes Grant to fumble. However, Frank Ziegler is on the spot to recover, and the Eagles remain in possession on the Chicago 35. You gotta keep a good thing going, say the Eagles, so it's Bobby Thomason again on the pitching end, only this time Pete Pijos is the receiver for a first down on the 21. Three plays fail to produce yardage, and it's a field goal attempt with Bob Walston doing the honors. And 35 yards out, the Toe Masters try is good. Philadelphia leads three to nothing. Cardinals come right back with an aerial attack to their own. Charlie Trippy teams up with Don Stonecipher for a 13-yard completion to the Eagle 20. Trippy continues his aerial antics, only this time Johnny Karras is on the receiving end of the 14-yard toss that brings them to the six. It's first down, goal to goal. Two plays later, the combination of Trippy and Karras pays off as the Cardinals score the first touchdown of the game. The conversion is good, and they go ahead of the Eagles 7-3. The Eagles need and want this win, but the cards will not give ground. In fact, they throw Bobby Thomason for a 14-yard loss on his own five-yard line. Thomason tries to toss his way out of the jam, but he is nailed by Don Joyce in the end zone. Thomason fumbles the ball. Bowley Peters recovers for Chicago. It's another tally for the Cardinals as they are on the top side of the 14-3 score at halftime. Moments after the third period kickoff, the infuriated Eagles catch the Cardinals for a safety, but they still trail 14-5. However, the Chicagoans won't stand still for a minute as Johnny Karras picks up 17 yards to put the ball deep in Philadelphia territory. 
Now it's Sally Matson's turn to tote the leather, and the burly back barrels his way for the remainder of the distance. Joe Gary kicks the extra point. Chicago ups the score to 21 to 5. However, the Eagles come right back with another field goal, and the scoreboard now reads Chicago 21, Philadelphia 8. Now watch the most thrilling play of the game. The ensuing kickoff by Chuck Betnerick is taken on the 10 by Ali Matson. The six foot two, 210 pound back takes stock of the situation, makes up his mind to take a long trip, and Matson marches through the entire Philadelphia squad for a total of 90 yards and another touchdown for Chicago. The lads from the Windy City now lead 28 to eight. The Eagles are fighting mad and proceed to march deep into Cardinal territory. The advance is aided by a Fred Ink pass to Frank Ziegler for the first down on the Chicago 25. Philadelphia's moved back to the 30 on a penalty, but the loss is of little matter as Bobby Thomason hits Harry Grant with a perfect pitch, and the play is complete for an Eagles score. The extra point is good, and the third quarter ends with the Cardinals leading the Eagles 28 to 15. Only 15 minutes left for the Eagles to pull this one out of the fire. However, they can't do a thing until late in the quarter when from the Chicago 32, Adrian Burke and Bob Walston team up to bring the ball to the 16-yard line. This is it. Adrian Burke passes to Bob Walston in the end zone for the final score of the day. And the Cardinals end the five-game losing streak by defeating the Eagles 28 to 22, leaving the Eagles tied with the Giants for second place in the American Conference. Wandering Dallas Texans invaded Philadelphia's Shy Park to battle the title-hungry Philadelphia Eagles before nearly 20,000 fans. Early in the opening quarter, Eagle quarterback Bobby Thomason pitches to Al Pollard for 10 yards, a first down on the Dallas 31. Now watches the Telra slow-motion camera, follows bone-crushing Al Pollard. He takes a pitch out from Thomason and bulls his way for 14 big yards to the Texans 17. After moving to the five, big Johnny Husbar crashes the remaining distance for the score. Walston converts. The Eagles lead seven to nothing. The Texans fail to move, and it's Philadelphia again in possession. Fullback Husbar barrels his way for 26 yards to the Dallas 41. After a line buck fails, Thomason takes to the air lanes and fires a nifty 41-yard spiral to Bud Grant for another Eagle touchdown. Walston converts, and moments later adds a 29-yard field goal. Score at the end of the first quarter, Eagles 17, Texans nothing. Midway through the second period, the Texans' Bob Solari fades to pass from the Dallas 15. He's rushed by the rugged Eagle forward wall and fumbles. Van Buren recovers in the end zone for another Philadelphia touchdown. Walston converts, Eagles 24, Texans nothing. Texans fight back. Solari from the midfield stripe fades and fires a perfect strike to Buddy Young. And the play nets 30 yards to the Philadelphia 20-yard line. After several line plays result in the loss of eight yards, Solari goes to the air again and maneuvers an 18-yard toss to Dick Wilkins that carries the pigskin to the Eagle 10-yard strike. Third down from one yard out, Buddy Young drives into pay dirt, and Pat Canamella converts, making the halftime count read, Philadelphia 24, Dallas 7. Early in the third quarter, it's the Eagles on the move. Bobby Thomason pitches successfully to Big Bud Grant, who rolls for 44 yards to the Dallas 35. The drive continues as Thomason heaves again to Grant for 11 yards and a first down on the 24. Thomason stays in the ozone and rifles again to his favorite target, Bud Grant, for 23 yards. Another Eagle touchdown. Walston converts. The scoreboard reads 31 to 7. Eagles lead.
Now get set for the defensive play of the game. The Texan Solari is set to punt from his own 43. The pass from center is high over his head. He recovers the ball, attempts a lateral. However, Eagle tackle Vic Sears is Johnny on the spot as he intercepts the leather and rambles nine yards into the promised land with his first touchdown in 12 years of pro football. Boston converts, and now the score, Eagles 38, Texans 7. Fourth period action finds the Eagles' Husvar from his own 19, skirting the Texans' right flank. He fumbles, and Stan Williams of Dallas scoops up the loose ball and routes 24 yards for a Dallas touchdown. Successful conversion makes it. Eagles 38, Texans 14. The Texans continue to roll as Frank Trapuca fires a bullet pass to Ray Palfrey, good for seven yards to the Dallas 49. After moving to the Eagle 42, Trapuca fades and tosses far downfield. Wilkins makes the grab on the run, and it's another Dallas touchdown. But it's a case of too little and too late as the Eagles humble the Texans 38 to 21 to remain in contention for the American Conference crown. Griffith Stadium, the Redskin Reservation in the capital of the nation, affords the battleground for Philadelphia's opportunity to overtake the Cleveland Browns. But the improving Redskins are labeled as real spoilers. This game is the last one for the fabulous Redskin rifle, the incomparable Sammy Baugh, who after 16 sensational years in professional football, all with Washington, has decided to call it a career. The Eagles need this game badly, and on the opening kickoff, they go right to work as Al Pollard feels the ball in the five and streaks right through the Redskins. Pollard breaks into the clear, but a fast-stepping brave named Johnny Williams overtakes him and drags him down on the Washington 30. With Bobby Thomason piloting, the Eagles go airborne on a pass to Frank Ziegler, who makes the grab on the seven, wheels and just makes it into the end zone as the Eagles fly away to an early seven-nothing edge over Washington. The rampaging Redskins lash back with their mighty might Eddie LeBaron directing a long pass that hits the mark as Julie Rykovich wraps it up and is down on the Philadelphia 24. Once again, LeBaron, the little man in the Redskin camp, plays a big role as he fakes runs, then passes goalward. Gene Brito pulls it in in the end zone as Washington ties the game at 7-7. second period, the Redskins start another Indian uprising, which is promptly quelled by the Eagles as LeBaron's pass is picked off by Bud Sutton, who with some nifty dancing and dodging, threads his way back to the Washington 25. A short pass into the right flat from Thomason to Frank Ziegler puts the birds on the Redskins' seven. Crossbuck, Thomason feeds to Al Pollard, who caroms off two Redskins and just manages to bounce across as the Eagles bound away to a 14-7 lead over Washington. The Eagles roar for more score, but the Redskins close the door as Thomason's toss falls into the alien arms of Johnny Williams, who parlays his pilfered pitch into a Washington touchdown by returning 38 yards and barely managing to squeeze across to tie the game again. Halftime score, Philadelphia 14, Washington 14. The stalemate stands up until the fourth quarter when the Skins launch a drive as LeBaron hits Gilmer with a spot pass that's good for 13 yards. Here's that same play again, but with a slightly different twist. LeBaron jumps and throws the Eagles' big Mike Jarmaluk injects a bit of legal larceny as he filches LeBaron's toss, and the hulking 240-pound tackle barrels 44 yards to a Philadelphia touchdown. The jubilant Eagles swarm all over Jamaluk as they take over the lead at 21 to 14. The Redskins, though, put on their war paint and really whoop it up on a LeBaron to Gilmer pitch up, with Gilmer hoisting a tremendous 70-yard heave to Hugh Taylor who's pulled down on the Philadelphia 16. Eddie LeBaron then takes over in the passing department while Hugh Taylor carries on as a receptionist in fine style as he snares the ball for another skin score that knocks the count for the third time in the game, this time at 21-all. 
though, is as bad as a loss for the Eagles today. So on a fourth down, they gamble. Murph throws a screen pass to Bob Walston, who laterals to Frank Whitehall. Whitehall fumbles, and the Redskins recover in Eagle territory. The Redskins want this game as a going-away present for Sammy Ball. And Choo Choo Justice opens the throttle on number 22 as he chugs 26 yards down to the Eagles one. With only 18 seconds remaining, little Eddie LeBaron sneaks across as the Redskins knock the Eagles out of the conference race with a 27-21 victory. Sling and Sam, the Redskin man, says goodbye to his many Washington admirers after the game. Enjoyed seeing the Eagle highlights as much as we've enjoyed presenting them. We'd like to take this opportunity to say thanks for the grand support that you expressed during the 1952 season, and we'd like to see that same fine support in the future. So friends, keep rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles. Get your season tickets at the Eagles ticket office and enjoy all of the exciting Eagles games. Step in at the Eagles office, 15th and Locust Street, or mail in your application. And now this is Byram Somm saying so long, everybody.